Hi everyone, welcome to Third Coast Gaming Radio. Today is February 7th, it is Super Bowl Sunday, we're episode 17. I won't be delivering pizzas today, so I'm probably not going to be watching it. Austin, what commercials are you ready for? I'm joined by my co-host. What commercials you want? Well, like, I mean, I've already seen the, like, Amazon Echo... Yeah, like, Amazon's really horny for Michael B. Jordan commercial. Um, and that's kind of all I need to see. Because that commercial, like, you know, has a Michael B. Jordan standing in the middle of a spring deluge of sprinklers, so I'm good. Ah, uh, but what if Michael B. Jordan was, like... What if they were just raining Doritos on top of him, you know? Or a bath of Doritos. You know, it could be Doritos. Why Why no more Doritos? Where did you go, Doritos? That would be a very interesting crossover for... Amazon is like halfway through that commercial. It's just Doritos are falling from the ceiling. You're like Michael, or they have Michael B. Jordan walk into the house with Doritos. It's a really strange commercial. Kind of be honest. Yeah. Or what if uh, what's the Patriots quarterback that everyone? Um. Well, he's Tampa Bay. Fifteen years. Um. Tampa Bay now. uh, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. What if he just threw Doritos on Peyton Manning? What if that was a thing? Would that make football more exciting? Was Peyton Manning ever... What if they were throwing Doritos instead of footballs, Austin? Was Peyton Manning ever the Patriots? I thought he was a different one. I don't know. I thought he was on the Patriots at some point. I mean, that probably wouldn't surprise me when I had to Google Peyton Manning, and this is completely... Yeah, me too. I have to... Or is his brother... No, he's totally... Or is it Tom Brady? That Tom Brady is... probably Tom Brady. Patriots, or was Patriots, and but now he's... Um... Tampa Bay. Yeah, I was thinking about Tom. I was thinking of Tom Brady. Yeah. I don't even know who Peyton Manning played for. Let's see what this says. Uh, the Colts, and yeah. then I, maybe the Colts the whole time. I don't. I think know. Eli played for the Patriots at one point. Yes, but I don't know anything about football. You know who I would let pour Doritos on top of me is uh, the tall lady from Resident Evil 8, I guess. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know. Fucking, I guess KFC is making uh, I Love You, Colonel Sanders 2, and tall lady is in it, according to some tweet by them. It's a tall order, to say the least, Austin. Eli Manning played for the New York Giants. Um, uh-huh. There you go. So, uh, I, yeah, okay. I mean, sure. It's, why not, right? Why not have this be a thing? Why not have... Colonel Sanders and Vampire Lady from Resident Evil. This is also just this art looks terrible. Uh, yeah, it looks like a um, what I would call like an adult game on the internet that someone is playing. That's what that art looks yeah, like. Yeah, I know this is coming from like a I don't know how much they make from a large company that has an entire restaurant chain like scattered throughout the United States as some weird joke and like. Colonel Sanders and the tall lady look like they're coming from very different places. Like, they look drawn so differently. Yeah, it's almost... It's disturbing, almost. Uh, It's very weird. Uh, The internet also latching on to tall lady in its uh, greatest time of need, apparently. Well, yeah, the internet latched on to the tall lady. You know, that's how we got Capcom to give us the height of the tall lady from Resident Evil 8. The, the tallest lady ever, as it turns nine out. Foot, Some other news was going on about Nine that. feet, oh. six inches in heels and the hat. Although, rest in peace to those actresses, who, the actress who passed away, who was playing with the vampires. I know that's something that happened recently, too. Yeah. Um... Let's see what else is going on. Oh yeah, Google's shutting down their internal Stadia development studios. Now this isn't like Stadia itself. It's just like anything that was in development for up to twenty twenty one is getting got rid of. And I don't know. I, I guess Stadia is just trying to do something. Well, I it's I know it was coming to LG TVs soon enough. What's up, well, this is just the result of them completely underestimating the kind of time investment it needed to make games that are going to attract people to this platform. Yeah, and they hadn't even started the uh, the Chrome integration yet, so I think you needed to buy like that controller set that had the um, 
that basically like a fire stick and a controller yeah which i think so. it's like a hundred bucks yeah and they just like they were always going to take like a solid year or three of losses on this project until they could actually start publishing their own stuff to make the stadia worth it and they've just kind of shown that like most of their sort of extra initiatives they're not willing to take that loss and if you think about like the last time like a big studio entered the market with like a console it was microsoft and the xbox and they had halo and at that time, like, consoles didn't have shooters. I mean, at this time, like, it, okay, in 2021, Stadia's coming out. It needs an IP. It, the, You know, the games are the things that bring people to the console. Like, what could they even bring that would, like, get people to download it? Like, you can basically play anything on your other consoles. Like, there's no reason for someone to, to do a deal unless Google's throwing down a bunch of money to get some exclusive... Well, I mean, it's, I mean, we're never going to know what they could have turned out, right? Because they shut down all of their internal development. Um, like there is, I, I, I think the pot, like there's a very high, like sort of ceiling for possibilities that they could have done through internal development at a company like Google that can take advantage of its sort of cloud architecture. And it's just, it's reach um, that it has that no other company in the world really has. And they've decided that they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to invest in that. So now they're just going to use the Stadia as a platform to uh, to host other people's games. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've kind of seen Google will shut down stuff after a year if it's not, like, making them money immediately. Or, you know, they're just shifting focus. I don't know. It's, it's weird. And then I think, like, Microsoft is kind of eating their lunch, too. Like, they're going to have their streaming thing as an option. Yeah more as an alternative and it's well i mean 15 bucks a month we did just see them try to and they make have it. game pass and they have a whole library of games you can get onto we did just see them try to make it like the option oh yeah that's true that's true it's still the better option is what i'll say sure if, i mean if you can afford 15 bucks a month or 10 to 15 bucks a month um and the other thing to note with like this Stadia studio shutdown is this like also kind of heralded the departure of Jade Raymond, um, who was supposed to be like leading this uh, like the drive for Google to like start developing their own games. Raymond like pretty notable for I believe her work in Assassin's Creed and also the um, EA studio that was doing a lot of. VR work when they started publishing Battlefront. Are you ready for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition? The trailer dropped last week. Okay, sorry, it's just my audio. May 14th. That's alright. Yeah, my audio just went blank for a moment. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not touching this, but I know a lot of people who are very excited to. Yeah, I, I'd say I'm excited to touch it. Um, It is going to be on EA Play as well, so if you if you pay them their five dollars of blood money, you can pay this play this for a month and then not do anything after. I, I I'm just gonna my my head canon is I'm gonna replay one and then not touch the other two because I just like that first game a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this looks. I mean, it looks fine. Like this looks like a fine like textured up res pack for people who don't want to download like. 125 gigs worth of 4k textures onto a pc and hope that they can run it um every like still day release just kind of seems like a worse version of the game though like especially when you look at mass effect 1 it looks like they took a lot of like the color that exists in that game out uh, especially with like the, the specifically the i believe it's pharos which is the sort of section where you're on a mako on some sky bridge uh, and you're going between like ruined skyscrapers and it just looks brown and also now there's a random lens flare effect that doesn't look good yeah they brought jj abrams on board to help with the lens flares yeah yeah and like the other thing to note here is that they've like integrated the mass effect 3 female shepherd face into the other two games and 
I think it's partially because we haven't seen a lot of Mass Effect 1 in motion in this legendary edition, but she, like, that face in Mass Effect 1 looks like a Skyrim mod. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how much more, like, cartoony they looked by the third. I wouldn't say, not cartoony, but it's just, like, it's very different. Well, I mean, yeah, but, yeah, like, it, like cartoony is, like, a word for it and i think kind of appropriate specifically with how it looks like integrated into this up version of one um he's like in three like it all fits like it fits because like that face was designed to work in that in that game as opposed to being like retroactively put in here although you know, i kind of hate this trailer it's not playing like the good like i would have done like the Mass Effect 1, some of the Mass Effect 1 music, but it's just like this boring movie cinematic music. Well, I mean, that's what those games became, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta sell yeah. them on that. Um, yeah, I'm not super, like, I'm not super stoked about, like, Legendary Edition. I, uh, like, if, if anything was gonna get me into this, it would have been, like, multiplayer on like the ps4 but that's not going to be in here um because they said you know that it would be a whole like an undertaking equal in like scope and needed labor as like this whole legendary edition would be is yeah but i don't know i'm pretty i haven't replayed those yet so it's a good time for me i know you've replayed them a couple of years ago i replayed so. them like last year like in june yeah so you've you've had your fill uh how about mass effect andromeda what if it had more aliens austin would that have made it a better game uh, there's some game informer article coming out about it's supposed to be having more aliens yeah so this was a game informer article based off of a feature on the gamer um like talking about the what the scope of Andromeda would was supposed to be, or like what they wanted it to be with the amount of aliens. Because Andromeda, there's two new aliens that you actually get to interact with, um, and they wanted like a handful more that they had like planned to use. But then they were told, that, well, they just wouldn't be able to because of scope and budgeting. Yeah. I, so I don't know. I don't know. I, didn't I don't know if like more aliens would have been the thing to sort of make Andromeda stick with me. Because like the thing I'll say about Andromeda is it's the Mass Effect game I can see myself returning to more than any of the other games in the trilogy. The problem with it is that nothing in it sticks with me. Um Yeah. And like something else to note in like the sort of the original gamer interview uh, that this Game Informer article is derived from is that like you know like a, a lot of the things that sort of made Andromeda the way it is uh, and the reasoning behind like the specific aliens they decided to go with are like it's friendly to cosplay right there was some uh, yeah. internal strife between Bioware Montreal and Bioware Edmonton um, and overall, like, the development of that was not, like, development of Andromeda was not, like, given the same sort of uh, care that development of, like, the main Mass Effect trilogy was. Which is kind of wild, because they were, like, you know, banking on this kind of, like, being the next set of trilogy for that series. And I, I mean, as we've seen, EA kind of has had problems with their Bioware stuff for the last couple of years like anthem after that also yeah, anthem got the time didn't even fucking come out what it was supposed to be so i don't know strange times for ea strange times and bioware yeah oh that's that other thing happened the uh the pinnacle station dlc is uh corrupted and they can't bring it into the legendary edition what is pinnacle station Austin? i don't know uh, what so is. within Mass Effect 1, like, this is a, one of the two DLC packs that uh, exists for the first Mass Effect. Pinnacle Station is technically a, like, a training, I think, horde mode area where you have a few missions. Um, I never myself actually played through Pinnacle Station. 
Um, I've only ever like watched gameplay of it. It's it's not like a really interesting DLC. Um, but I mean, the thing to note here is that you know the team viewed the Legendary Edition as a way to gather everything that they had ever made for Mass Effect single player into one package. And it is kind of a bummer. It's a it's a bummer for the people who worked on this game that they won't be able to get everything. Yeah. Seems like it. You know, Austin, could buy the Mass Effect trilogy right now for thirty dollars on Xbox three sixty. I mean, you could, but then you'd also have to buy like all of the DLC. I think. I think the trilogy might come with. Uh, I mean, it did on Origin. DLC. Oh, I I bought the Mass Effect trilogy and then I had to, and then I realized I didn't come with the DLC, and then I realized it'd be cheaper just buy the DLC packs and the individual games instead of just the trilogy and then the DLC packs. So gotcha. I had to refund the trilogy and then buy the individual games and the DLC packs. Gotcha. I'm gonna bid this for twelve fifty. Place the bid. Oh, I'm not even logged in. Fuck it. Well, that's okay. Maybe I'll just play them in what? What is it? Three months? May? Um, a bit more, I think. But I don't know how. That's to... May fifteenth. It's about three months. About three months. I'm not entirely sure how counting works anymore. Apparently. Um. That's all right. Um. Apex Legends also coming to Switch on March 9th, so. People can play that on the go and uh, drop their connection. I mean, that's cool for Apex. I'm glad they're uh, seeing stuff coming out. Yeah, I'm... everything should come to Switch. I just, I wonder how that's gonna play. I can't. I still just can't imagine playing Apex on like anything less than like a pro controller, right? Like on a Switch's pro controller. I could not imagine using Joy Cons for that game. No, me neither. And my my drift is so bad on my Joy-Con that I I'd probably be on my shitty GameCube controller playing it. Yeah, like I'm, I have I don't I haven't experienced things for drift on my light, but I am almost always terrified. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a bummer. But uh, on to more Nintendo news. The uh, the Switch has sold nearly eighty million units. This is from the uh, third quarter results at the end. March 2021. Um, good on them. I got it. It's wild. Uh, it's surpassing the 3DS sales because the 3DS was at 75 million. Um, banger, as it turns out. This kind of rolls into like it, you know. Nintendo's like being a little cagey about the Switch Pro. Being like, eh, you know, not right now. They're in a, they're selling. COVID right now. I know Nintendo is hurt from COVID, so I think they're just banking on, like, keeping their profit margins fine, not making a new console. I mean, I'm sure they've got something in the works. Like, Nintendo is a company that is almost notoriously, like, secretive with projects before, like, it gets the chance to actually announce them to the world. Um, Definitely, definitely. But, like, I... This is like a wild sort of um, like curve for Nintendo, um, especially like in regards to like right before this was the Wii U <laughs> that was notoriously not doing well. Um, so it's crazy. I think it's like it was always pretty predictable that like the Switch was going to like once people like got a hold of it, um, it always seemed like it was going to be Nintendo's next big thing right like will this ever get to the point where it surpasses like the Wii it um could. yeah it's closing in on it yeah. the, it's saying on here the Wii has a 113 million so it's only 30 on I mean that wouldn't surprise me especially if like the metrics that the company uses to sort of gauge the like the Switch family will also include like the Switch Pro when that comes out yeah yeah and uh, they were also saying that the quarter from October 2020 to December 2021 was their most profitable yet as well, which very much is in line with, like, 
you know, how well Animal Crossing sold in March and how well the console is doing during the pandemic. Yeah, like, you know, working, like, working best by, like, during the holiday season, last holiday season, the thing that we were moving the most, re- I saw it definitely were switches, or, like, switch lights and switch, like, Fortnite packs, you know? It, I mean, it's a, you know, we got we got parents who are gamers, and it is probably... The easiest thing to give your child is you throw a switch light at the child with Mario or Animal Crossing, and then they'll fuck off and leave you alone, Austin. <laughs> so it's also probably it as far as consoles go, like probably the easiest to get a hold of, and also the easiest to like identify instead of like you know like the difference between an Xbox One and an Xbox Series. It's true. This is very true. Let me see how much the base PS4 is going for right now. I'm thinking it's like two fifty. Yeah, base PS4 shouldn't be over like like PS4 Slim shouldn't be over yeah. like three fifty. Uh, the old model. Uh, speaking of sales, who this is like discontinued. Um, Sony has sold about four point five million. PS5 so far, so good on them. Um, those will be available in six months to a year for the regular consumer, but for everyone else, hey, let's go for it. A third of those are scalpers. It's fine. Let's see. Uh, I'm actually surprised they were able to. It's about two seventy nine. About two seventy nine is a PS four right now. I'm actually surprised they were able to move that many slim. consoles. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, I just. I mean, that's pretty wild. Hopefully, like by holiday of this year, they'll be able to actually produce a significant amount, or at the very least, the frenzy around the PS five will have subsided a bit. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to get a PS5. Hey, they put Control Ultimate Edition on PS Plus, and that'll probably be the first thing that I play on my PS5 when it comes out, or Miles Morales. Oh, yeah, um, Miles Morales was the one that sold about 4 million copies as well, so most of the people who picked up a PS5 got Miles Morales. Yeah, like it was... Among among with the other people on PS4 who got it, yeah. Yeah, like it's a real like popular it's a follow-up to a very popular game and is also like was there at launch which was really what what you need and um i don't really think there was much else coming out at the same time as morales i think I, i mean obviously cyberpunk was the only thing coming out further ahead of that but like i think they were in a good space to like sell some copies well i mean yeah but the other thing is like you know you have you know, we're in the middle of the pandemic, you have kids at home, if you're a parent, and you need something that they can play and that you can play around them. That's Miles. And it was like 40 bucks on PS4, too. Yeah, so. that's the other thing. Is like The most expensive version of Miles Morales like also came with the first Spider-Man game, the remastered version of uh, the first Spider-Man game. So, Correct. Yeah. Um. Let's see. The other thing going on is the um, Warner Brothers got their patent on the fucking Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. So that's a thing. Did you watch? I there was that Game Maker's Toolkit YouTube video that came out talking about it, but I didn't get around to watching it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I do really enjoy the Nemesis system. It was very cool when I first played that game. Yeah, so the Game Makers Toolkit video is a very good, um, like, sort of explainer on how the Nemesis system, specifically in mostly in Shadow of War, uh, works uh, and how what it does at its most interesting, which is just that it allows you, as this uh, generic dude uh, Italian, uh, to have unique encounters with uh, very, we'll say, quirky orcs uh, that populate uh, Mordor and sort of helps you define your relationship with these orcs like whether you know they are your are tribal or they are uh, you you know convert them into your army and turn them into spies and whatnot and how like that affects the relationship that the player has with the world because it's certainly 
uh, nothing in the main in the game's like core narrative is going to make you care about the events of this game like the nemesis system will no it's it's always i I, what i remember it's always just been like hey i'm just gonna go have these weird fights with these orcs and like maybe there's gonna be a screen full of orcs fighting at me i don't know what the story of this game is i would just here for revenge yeah yeah and so that's and that's what's like so dang good about the nemesis system in uh like in shadow of war is like sure the overarching narrative of the game is actually really bad uh but but you know like is it really it's a bit more worth playing if you know i can forge some weird sort of like rival rivalry with this orc who just keeps you know not killing me and leaving me to die uh in like some like humiliating uh way and i keep finding them like four times and they keep doing that to me and then like on the fifth time i can finally kill them but then they come back because they cheat death or something um yeah there's a really good video of like um like five orcs like turning on you at the same time on the internet too i don't know if you caught that at all oh yeah there's a few of those it's wild yeah they're pretty funny i Shadow of War does some weird stuff too. I, I always wanted to play Shadow of War because I I know they had those bigger strongholds that you were like trying to get into and you're like setting up your table of conquests, trying to decide who goes where, or who's attacking when. Yeah, like that's the main the orcs at the main gameplay pool of that is that you're taking over all these fortresses. Uh, and once you take them over, you can populate them with your orcs. Um, and of course, they might betray you later, but you know, for that moment, for now, you're like kind of taking over Mordor. And it's just, it's wild to me that this has been patented. Pat, patented. Um, I think that really sucks. Yeah, I think that sucks too. I, I know, you know, like the. Um... Mass Effect's dialogue wheel is another like weird patent that's actually a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. People, other companies have gotten around that and still have like dialogue options. I'm trying to think what other games have dialogue wheels. I can't really. Yeah, sure, but like. No, I don't. Like a dialogue wheel is is something like it's not that hard to sort of maneuver around something like a dialogue wheel, but like when you look at the specificity here in the Nemesis system it's really hard to work around like what's in that patent because like at best you're going to get something like so far at best what we've gotten is like a assassin's creed odyssey style like mercenary system but that's so uninteresting compared to the stories that are made uh through the nemesis system specifically yeah that's true so wonder what shadow of war 3 is going to look like i, I don't know if they're making another one of these i know they're going to try to implement the system in like their other uh games probably have something like that in gotham knights if not suicide squad yeah i'd be into that i'm i'm very excited for that co-op uh arkham thing just because i'm gonna play with my friends yeah. like i think punching punching bad dudes is fun sometimes yeah it's just uh, this nemesis system thing is really a travesty for like the sort of the irritative na- the irritative nature of like game development in a real way. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I was wanting to see it in like shooters more, just like the it's it's not a nemesis system, but like I do remember like the Ghost Recon like Wildlands system has Yo. like. I guess it's more like the Assassin's Creed thing, but you have, like, a big bad guy, and you have to take out all their lieutenants before you get to the bad guy yeah. at the end of it. Like, imagine, imagine if Ghost Recon, like, was it Badlands Breakpoint? If Breakpoint had, like, was that reactive, right? That it wasn't just, like, uh, John Bernthal's dude who's the big baddie, but it's, like, everyone in the wolves uh mercenary company imagine how much more interesting that game would be 
Uh, yeah, it'd be way cooler as you murder, as you shoot a dude and he comes back with an eye patch being like, I wasn't actually dead and I'm going to fucking murder you here. Yeah. And he comes back with like a, like one of those juggernaut outfits from like Call of Duty. Yeah. God, it'd be so fun. And the other thing to know is that like patenting this like tech does make it harder to like, does make it harder to imagine a world where we build the nemesis system out in a way where it's not like they come back and they're just invulnerable to most things you do now because it's kind of the the sort of uh, cycle with the nemesis system in, chat in the Mordor games is that you know you kill an enemy and if they come back uh, if you I mean if you, you know kill them as they get more powerful they just kind of become more immune or immune to everything that you can do aside from a stab with a sword. Yeah, see, I would I would bring them back with a tank and a bunch of dudes, so or two tanks, bam. Wild. Yeah, now, the other thing that's wild is uh, n you know, no Overwatch two or Diablo four in twenty twenty one. I guess they're pushing that. I really thought Overwatch two was gonna come out like way sooner, but they might be going. Uh, back to that game and making it more because they were talking about bringing pve stuff out to it and then expanding the pvp and then that i think the original overwatch one client was going to work with two yeah or that it was pulling the maps from one yeah, that's the idea is that they won't separate the player base uh the only thing different between like players who are using Overwatch 2 and the first Overwatch would be like cosmetics. Yeah, I wonder if all the PvP new maps of Overwatch 2 are going to be thrown in Overwatch 1. Yeah, that was yeah, stuff like that is the general idea uh that um who's the director Kaplan? Uh Jeff Kaplan was kind of talking about when they debuted Overwatch 2. Yeah, and that's the initial pitch, so I'm curious if it'll be the same thing going forward, because they haven't really talked a lot about it since it was going on. Oh my god, there's... Apparently Blizzard was trying to do some Warcraft-themed Pokemon Go in November 2018. I don't know, I'm just at the bottom of this article being surprised by people jumping on that. Pokemon is like the only thing that could have done Pokemon Go. I don't think any other, like the Minecraft thing tried to do it and it wasn't as good. Wait, you know there's a Witcher, like, Pokemon Go thing, right? Uh, what are you collecting? Are you I'm collecting not... signs? I think monsters? I think you're just fighting monsters. I haven't actually messed with it. I only saw, like, an encounter where it looked like the player was fighting um, a Leshen from, like, The Witcher 3, which is just an angry tree spirit. Yeah. This is from August 29th. Oh, I remember my friend was playing a Jurassic Park one where you're, like, collecting DNA samples everywhere or some shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is... I can't do this. I can't... I can't even send you these pictures, Austin. Good. The worst... My Little... God damn it. Witcher X My Little Pony. Yeah, so... Austin. So, you know, don't oh, expect man. your big Blizzard game this year. Um... Which I know is going to bum some people out because you know people aren't necessarily happy with Activision Blizzard uh, regarding their what they've been putting out over the like the last few like year or two. Um, now just just Call of Duty, yeah. as it yeah, turns I know out. People were ex and um, I know people who are excited for skate. Diablo Four. Hey, it could it could be something. I don't I, know. I, don't. I mean, it will be like they're. People love Diablo three. Like it, they came, it re came back out, and people played that game for fucking hours. My uncle, who doesn't play video games, played the fucking shit out I of that game. Yeah, uh, I think his kid got him into uh, it, and he played more than his kid, and he was losing. He was waste. He told his quotes were, "I'm wasting my life playing this damn video game." I'm like, "All right, just keep replaying those dungeons. Go for it." Cool. It's wild. Yeah, no, it's. Other sh things that aren't coming out is this Prince of Persia remake's not coming out for the original Sands of Time. They delayed it. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. I mean, indefinitely. Do, do people care about that game? Uh, yeah, it's... 
It's wild. I mean, the thing to note here is that, like, they say they've delayed it, like, it's been delayed indefinitely, but, like, I think this is still coming out. Right? Like, this isn't one of these... Yeah, and it says it'll be available on PS4 and Xbox One. It's not even talking about the next-gen yeah, console. Yeah, it's so. like, this oh, isn't one of those, like, instances where we hear delayed indefinitely and then the game disappears. Like, I'm pretty sure we're going to hear, like, we're going to yeah. see this game get released. Uh, I don't even remember the trailer for this thing coming out. Oh my there God. was one. They, I'm watching it right now. Yeah, they, they made him look like the almost the Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah, that's character. That model. is the thing I remember is that people were not necessarily happy with how the aesthetic of that game was updated. Uh, yeah, uh, it was supposed to come January 21st. Cool. It's for people who want it. Um. Speaking of other games nobody cares about is uh, Battleborn servers are offline now. So. That game came out at the worst fucking time. It's like a week after that game came out. It's that trial version of fucking Overwatch came out. That demo. Yeah. The, it's wild. It's. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Uh, it's a. I don't know how to feel about like the arc of that game. I don't ever remember particularly uh, finding anything about it to be that good uh, when I was playing it. But yeah. yeah, I remember playing the demo. I was just like, I don't like this at all. I Overwatch is just way better, as it turns out. Well, it wasn't even like Overwatch is better. It was the thing. I remember disliking both of those equally. It's just like... I think by the time this game had come out, I, I was pretty much done with Gearbox's, uh, like, shtick. And this game was just more yeah. in a very real way. Yeah. With its, like... At humor. least, like, Borderlands 3, I could just turn the fucking voices off and just shoot stuff in that game. That's how I played that game. Yeah. I don't want people talking to me, and I just blew people's faces off. Sure, and I also just... I mean, I've never even necessarily liked how, like, they've, like, how their games have played, so. And I don't think Battleborn was the exception to that rule either. True, true. Hey, we forgot to do our PlayStation Roundup thing, so I guess we'll do it at the end right here. Did you load yours up? Yeah, I got mine loaded up. Alright, I, um, I played 606 hours of video games in 2020, Austin. These are rookie numbers, I'd say. They're rookie numbers, you know. Got some stats for you. Oh, see, I'm looking. I'm trying to make sure. I have tabs open. I have so many tabs open, Travis. Yeah, yeah. Um, so many tabs. Here, I'll uh, I'll roll through mine while you're getting okay. yours. Uh, I played Red Dead Redemption Two for ninety hours. That was my top playing game on PlayStation. So that was uh, that was probably December fifth to like January first is probably when I played that game. So good on me uh after that is destiny 2 with 86 hours which uh is not the dlc ex for that game i probably played that dlc for 20 hours most of this is probably like either between march and may of last year when i was just like grinding these events that had come out just messing around with it and uh battlefield 5 at 59 hours good times maybe i'll play more of that okay all right, you got, I got throw me some of those I numbers. Got my awesome. big numbers. Um, All right, big so numbers. Um, total hours played of gameplay in 2020 for me uh, would be is 653 hours. Um, not a lot. Uh, and sort of most played games would be Cyberpunk, Remnant, and Doom Eternal. Interesting. Interesting. Not going. What's uh? What's cyber? That is seventy-one yeah. hours. Seventy-one. Remnant is forty-nine. 50? Forty-nine. All right. So I did not put a lot of time into this system, or at least not as much as I used to, into the PlayStation system. Uh, as it turns out, your PC is where it's at. Yeah, turns out like if I felt like playing anything, I would just be on PC, and that's yeah, that's where I spent a lot of time. And like, 
the summer of you know replaying mass effect starting things like the outer wilds um and the witcher yeah yeah uh let's see i got 157 trophies austin good on me um they have a breakdown of what days you play that i thought was really interesting this like reflects my work schedule so much where it's like monday and tuesday are my days off and those are like kind of my most played days along with wednesday sometimes and then i I don't play on saturday at all probably because i'm work i work like three to nine and uh friday and sunday are just kind of there yeah afternoons on tuesdays my most played time yep evenings on sunday Makes sense not nah, evenings on sunday nice i'm not even entirely sure what what game that was <laughs> What game that would be? No, maybe, maybe it was the maybe it was Cyberpunk. I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, that's 2020. We can we can finally not talk about 2020 more. We put it to bed, Austin. We did it. Took it out back. Made it dig its own grave. Yeah, dig it. We'll roll. Bring it back half three, halfway through 2021. Be like, oh, I remember when it was better back then, and the atmosphere wasn't on God. fire. Everyone deserves better from uh, from last. Everyone world. does deserve better. All right, Austin, where can people find you at on the internet? Oh, on the internet. Oh, you can find me at Beardless Two on Twitter, T W O Two. And uh, I'm at Travis Twenty Three Doyle. Uh, we'll be back next week and to do our uh, gaming impressions. I'm, I'm I need to play some more stuff. I you played some stuff, but like, oh, we yeah, can I played some stuff, but I'm gonna play right. more stuff. Yeah, I want to play more stuff. I want to talk about Persona more when I actually play that and not boot it up for three hours and then not yeah, finish it. Yeah, you know, and like, sure, I've done a lot of control, but what if I did more control? Yeah, what if you beat all the DLC and then came back and was like, yo, this DLC is really good, or maybe it's not. I Who knows? Mean, I've beaten one of the DLCs, and I can tell you right now, it's really good. Ah, <laughs> it's Verdict's in. Five out of five for Austin. All right, we'll be back next week. Thank you.